Greetings, survivors and friends. Shadow Frax here, bringing you the weekly lowdown on all things Rust development. And in this episode, as we crawl inexorably towards the next forced wipe on July the first, there are a number of important changes coming. So pay attention. And before we go any further, please make sure you're subscribed with the notifications on to stay in touch with all the very latest news. First of all, and most likely to be included in the next patch, unless there's a major U-turn, are some fairly significant changes to wounding and healing. And although the maths in places is fairly complex, and the whole thing is still subject to change, I'll try to give you the current fundamentals in the most digestible way possible. In short, there will now be two wounded states, the existing incapacitated lying there like an idiot unable to move one, and a new crawling wounded state in which you hover very slightly off the ground for some reason. Hmm. If your health's reduced to zero through full damage, you'll be instantly incapacitated. But if your health is reduced to zero in most other ways, you'll turn into a crawler. In this mode, you'll have a bit more health, a higher chance to recover, and will be able to move around slowly and open doors. But that's about it. Also, if someone starts looting you whilst you're crawling, then you'll go incapacitated. In both states, if you continue to take damage, you'll eventually die properly. If left to your own devices, though, in either state, the game will, after a while, decide whether you're going to recover or die from your injuries as per usual, but your chances to recover will now be higher depending on your food and water levels. Also, if you're crawling and happen to have a large med kit in your belt bar, then your chances to recover will be 100%, but this will only be used up if your normal recovery check fails, otherwise you get to keep it. Huzzah. As mentioned last week, other players will once again be able to revive you with a swift syringe stab, an action that takes 5.25 seconds by the way, and slightly faster than a manual revive. Okay, so imagine you can get a guaranteed revival after being wounded if you have a medkit in your belt, but that's disabled for fall damage or you'd be able to fall from any height and guarantee your survival. Wouldn't want that. That'd be way too much fun. But now, imagine you eat some deadly pickles in a helicopter. They put you into a wounded state. You crawl out of the helicopter and fall very far. You enter an incapacitated state. But you didn't die from falling, you died from pickles. So, your med kit saves you. This one weird trick was exactly what the ever resourceful players on staging came up with and is consequently the reason why the game now does some extra calculations. I just wanted to mention it really A, to save you the bother of trying it for yourself and B, because of the name the technique was given. Pickle shooting gonna have to try and use that in conversation. Another big change coming on July the 1st is of course the new DLC that I showcased recently and I can confirm now a few details that you were foaming at the megaphone to find out. It will actually be called the Voice Props Pack and it'll cost $12.99 slash £12.99 or 4 million wooden ruble depending on where you live. Actually, that works out as $18 if you live in the UK. Personally, I think we should get a discount. The ever generous chaps at Face Punch will be giving you a 10% launch discount on it, though, out of the kindness of their own hearts. And of course, the Steam summer sale is on, which means Rust and the previous DLC packs are all 50% off. The new DLC doesn't include that discount, by the way. Some recent changes on it, just to note, there are now more pre-programmed radio stations on boom boxes. Disco floors will have eight different gradients. The disco ball now requires power to work, and thanks to your suggestions on one of my recent Twitch streams, you can now put cassettes in mailboxes. Let the psychological warfare commence. And the mobile phone now has a slant mode. Um, I think you mean silent. Slant, you. Sadly, though, you can no longer record onto a cassette whilst it's playing. Pies denied. Oh, by the way, I have a sponsor for this video. Here's a message from Codefling. Codefling is hosting a custom Rust Monument competition from now through July 26th with $800 in total prizes. Voting starts on August 2nd and the community will decide the winner. The winning submission will be available for free on Codefling, so be sure to vote for your favorite. Are you interested in joining but have no experience in map making? Codefling is here to help. Their Discord and the link to the contest details can be found in the description below. <laughs> nice, I'll give you a tour of the new bunker entrances in a second, but first, a few other important changes. Binoculars will only show name tag pips during the day now. The pop-in delay on these has been reduced, and there was a fix for not being able to see them at certain angles. There was also a fix for not being able to crouch under half walls, but most excitingly, as you may have seen announced already, DLSS support is coming to Rust 
on July the 1st. What's that, you may say? DLSS is an optimization for GeForce RTX cards and turns out to be the reason behind all those render scale commits we've been seeing. In a nutshell, it stands for Deep Learning Super Sampling and uses AI rendering technology to increase graphics performance when GPU workload is high. I won't go into it in detail, I'll leave you to research it if you're really interested and I'm fairly certain the team will tell us more about how it should impact Rust's performance in the next dev blog. In the meantime, you can currently test it for yourself on the staging branch and there are a couple of options to play around with. Something else now on the staging branch are the new bunker entrances for the railway system. You'll find these variations away from monuments in the countryside and here's a lightning tour of the layout. There's a hatch at the top with a ladder leading down. From here there are a few different rooms to explore including an office, toilet and a generator room, plus a couple of routes that you can take through the bunker providing you with some stealthier options. And at the bottom you'll find a room with a computer station. This is linked to a camera that watches over the bunker entrance and I'm sure I don't have to explain why that's a good thing. You can't program these stations with any other CCTV addresses but you can currently find out the address of the bunker camera and use this in your own station at home. After this section there's a slightly different stairwell and lift shaft that hooks up the subway system as per usual. Talking of which, you'll notice on staging that the new train signals have been added although at present they don't function and will possibly be there but disabled in the next patch. I can confirm though that they'll probably function as follows, green for all clear, amber for something coming and red for an obstruction up ahead or something like that. Another change to the train tunnels that'll be winging its way to us in the future but not sure when is bypass tunnels and it's probably better to visualize these than explain them so here's a picture. As you can see these will be extra sidings that will branch off at stations and then link up to some of the currently unused doors. I guess it'll also give players some areas to duck into on work carts if being pursued. In other works in progress, of course the underwater labs are still being worked on heavily but sadly we'll have to wait a while longer to get visuals on these and I will bring them to you as soon as physically possible. Oh and there's a new Rust trailer, finally! which shouldn't need redoing for at least another eight years. I'd like to say a massive thank you to my long-term sponsor awdit.co.uk who've been powering my content for a long time now. They've just upgraded me with a new 3080 which means I can continue to bring you the very best quality content. Definitely check them out, link below and I'll be doing a rather good giveaway with them for my UK and Europe followers soon so stay tuned for that. Also massive thanks to everyone who supports this channel via Patreon or Twitch. I couldn't do it without you. Please leave me a like and a comment with what you think to this week's news. Join me on Twitch, Twitter, Facebook, Discord and my Steam group to stay up to date with my content and I shall catch you all really soon but in the meantime keep calm and stay rusty. And cheerio. This video is powered by AWDIT's producer range of workstation PCs available now at awdit.co.uk Pickle shooting